Welcome to the Cedar Creek Bible in a Year podcast. Whether you are listening on your own, with a friend, or a group of friends, we hope this podcast helps you connect with Scripture and also enriches your relationship with God. Here are your hosts, Luke Shortridge and Andy Rechtenwald. Hi, everybody. Cedar Creek Radio is on the air. We are hanging out today with Daniel Rechtenwald, brother of Andy Rechtenwald. Dun, dun, dun. So Daniel is hanging out with us because uh, we're in the book of James, James being the brother of Jesus. And we knew that James, he had some insider knowledge about Jesus. He had to. And Daniel has plenty of insider knowledge about Andy, which we covet. And uh, any chance we have really to embarrass Andy, we take. So, Daniel, do you have any good Andy stories for us? Um, I have one today. I don't know if it's an embarrassing Andy story. It's just a story that I look back on fondly because I was the benefiter uh, or the benefactor of this. Um, um, There's times in your life growing up where you feel like your parents had you for the sole purpose of not having to do yard work anymore. (laughs) (laughs) And um, being the younger brother, I happened to get away with some of that, whereas Andy and our older brother Mike, they had to do a lot of the heavy lifting. And there was... uh, one summer where we were mulching like our backyard and my my mom and our stepdad she was really they were really into like having like an awesome landscaping or whatever so we had a whole bunch of mulch and our stepdad bought like three truckloads of mulch and dumped them on the driveway and andy and michael were in charge of wheelbarrowing the mulch all the way to the backyard through our gate and around the pool and then dumping it and spreading it and the entire time while they were doing that i was floating on a raft in our pool (laughs) (laughs) every word of this is true he left out the part that it took us 10 hours to do it it oh i think it was like a saturday and we just Woke up early and started mulching and then went until after dinner and was like... Why didn't you have to help? He's the Um, younger brother, man. I just wasn't asked to and I wasn't going to volunteer myself. (laughs) (laughs) Come to think of it, Joey, our younger younger than Daniel, didn't help either. He was just... I don't even know what happened to him. He probably went and skateboarded somewhere. It's good to be a kid. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good story, Daniel. Yep. It was fun. I remember it. He wouldn't have the biceps and forearms that he has today if it wasn't for that Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. I actually... You know what? I owe you one. Or two. You'd be two thirds of the man you are today without. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and jump into chapter three. If you've missed our previous episodes, you might want to go back and check those out, get some context mm-hmm. of the method to our madness. Uh, we're going to start with verse one, which is controlling the tongue. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect, and we could control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go whatever way we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn whenever the pilot, wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. So we'll kind of stop there for a second and Ooh. talk about this. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting part of James. It talks about controlling the tongue. Uh, and the tongue is such a, it's a small, is it a muscle if I remember correctly? Maybe. An organ? Muscle? I think Something? it's a muscle. Tissue? We're going to put the research department on that. Okay, research department's got it. I think it. it's a muscle, though. I think you're right. Okay. It's the fastest healing part of the body is what I've heard. What? Yeah. I thought that was your cornea. Maybe you're right, but I heard it was a tongue. Well, we'll get the research department on that. Yeah, get both of those things we need to know okay. soon. Okay. He's- He's shaking his head. This is going great. So, um, Andy, when was the time that you spoke before thinking? And what A happened? time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My entire podcast and career. Um, Every time. The uh, So, first, I think that the first part of this, the first verse is so weighty for people who, like, we're doing a podcast on the Bible. I don't know if you've felt this, but I get so almost anxious sometimes talking with people about, um, like, not new believers or whatever, when I'm talking to people, like when you and I are having a dialogue, I get really anxious about treating the scriptures very carefully. Yeah, me too. And not over speaking like a a wave of... I think we both have a a reverence for the scriptures. Yeah, it's a weight. But so when you ask, but I just wanted to say that because that every time I read it, I get kind of like, oh yeah, yep, I got to take this very seriously. But a a time I spoke before thinking, um, it typically doesn't happen in group settings because I'm actually pretty quiet in group settings, as most of people here know. Um, but when I'm with, like, friends and family and stuff, happens all the time. I mean, I'm just kind of like a, um, kind of, I talk a lot when I'm with my friends and family. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it happens pretty much all the time. All right, I got a good story. Okay. So my best friend, Brent Paroli, uh, he, he kind of was like my brother growing up almost. I mean, he was over every day mm-hmm. for a good 10-year stretch. 
And uh, we're in high school. My grandfather had just had a stroke, so he was recovering from that. We we're going to go to a birthday party for him. And Brent had been over. He went to church uh, that morning with us. Uh, I think his girlfriend was there as well, just kind of hanging out, whatever. And we were going to go to this birthday party. And uh, Brent was just hanging out at my house because he had been there all day. So we're going to go to this birthday party for my grandpa. And uh, we're getting up to go in the car. And Brent stands up and he starts walking toward the door. And I, I stopped him. I said, hold on. I said, why are you even going? He's like, uh, <laughs> what? I said, this is, this is a very important night. You know, my grandpa, he's recovering. <laughs> this is a family thing, Brent, and you're not part of our family. Oh, oh yeah. I, I was such a jerk to him. And he's like, you don't want me to go? I'm like, obviously. And he goes, okay, wow. see you later. Go home. It's like from a movie. I know. And I've paid for this for 15 years. <laughs> I mean, I, it gets brought up all the time of, Brent, why are you even going? Because I, I had this like internal conflict going in my head of like, is he really going to have the audacity? And then he did which I should have just had a conversation with him. So, yeah, I I put my foot in my mouth I, a little bit. I, I'm going to wait until Brent hears this podcast, and I'm going to say that to him all the time. Oh, he, he won't be surprised. Oh, why are you even going? <laughs> <laughs> Do you not want me to go? Obviously. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I feel, like, uncomfortable just He said plenty of horrible things to me. We have yeah. that kind of relationship. Interestingly enough, we've never heard of anything he said that's horrible to you. But we'll continue on with the podcast. That's right. He's not here to testify to that. It's true. All right. <laughs> Let's go to our next verse. We are verse, uh, well, I guess I chopped verse 5 or in yep. half. So you want to finish verse 5 and continue on for us, Andy? Yep. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Does a spring of water bubble out, bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? Does a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? No, and you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Oof. All right, so I, it, there's so much here. There, there's so much. We could do an entire show just about our right. speech because I, I believe that, you know, as you mature in Christ, your speech should also mature in Christ, mm -hmm. but oftentimes it just doesn't. Um, it's so tough to keep a tight rein on your tongue. Um, I remember a few months back at White House, we, we were doing prayer requests with our greeter team, and somebody brought up just something they were struggling with, a family member, and another greeter was there, heard that. Uh, they told their, I believe it was their son about it, and the son confronted the other kid at school. So we went from prayer requests oh, no. to back channels to now confrontation at school about it, and it just blew up. And it's like you, you can have the purest of intentions with your speech, right? but if you are not careful and you don't control your tongue, it can have devastating consequences yep. for your life and the life of the people around you. I agree. Uh, man, There's I think about all the things, all the evil that has been caused through speech and through the way that people speak to one another. Um, it's kind of James is hitting on something. We asked if it's a muscle, and he says it's a tongue, it's a fire. It's from hell. Ah, and that's just whew. take that research department. That's right, guys. We don't need you anymore. We don't need your guy. science and your facts and your Google. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, he wasn't do that now. He wasn't looking it up either. I mean, Wait, if you want to do that, you do now, have it. Just do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course, I have it now. Is it a muscle? It, it is, is an organ. A, it, it's cell both. It tissue? is the um, largest. What? Why are you laughing? I'm laughing at Luke because he won't stop. I'm guessing. I'm trying to be right. Please. It's the, it's the largest um, muscle-based organ. It has thousands of taste buds, somewhere between 2,000 and 10,000. Did you know that you can't actually see your taste buds? Huh? The things that you're looking at, little bumpy areas, are called palipae, and they're hair-like projections. What? Uh, there's, they're hair-like projections on top of your taste buds. What? If you know that. That's Shocking. Incredible. You don't actually sense different tastes in different areas of the tongue, so... Sorry oh, for that. Interesting. Uh, another huh. common misconception, the ability to roll or curl your tongue isn't entirely genetic. Huh. Go figure. Everybody around yeah. the room is curling currently their rolling tongue. their tongue. It's not really even the strongest muscle in your body. So some people say... Figuratively, like it, it is. That's true. Paul would, James would say that it is. Why do I keep doing that? Okay, anyway, sorry. Please continue. Anyway, 
So uh, as far as strength, that would be the jaw muscle as far as pr oh. providing the most pressure. Providing the most force is your quads or your glutes. And the one that, that works the, the hardest cool. overall is your heart. And um, the muscles not, technically... Not eight. with everybody, Eric. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> So the, heart, the uh, tongue can also the color of the tongue can also indicate different um, mm. medical problems. And did you know that you your tongue can actually have fat like fat deposits in it if you gain weight? So you yeah, selection. your tongue can gain, gain weight. Oh my gosh! Wow, that was fascinating, Eric. Thank you for sharing and actually working hard. You're a tireless worker, Eric. It's true. Thank you never you, stop making this podcast producer. better. I just throw my I just show my faith. Through my works. Oh, oh, James does. Anyway. Well. All right. Go back to your app game now. So, uh, Andy, what can we do going forward to make sure that your speech is pleasing to God? Don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Proverbs. There's Say a proverb nothing. that says, you know, he who keeps his mouth keeps his life. Oh. Um, so the best course of action typically is to remain silent and be careful in what you say. Because, um, I mean, James is saying it's uncontrollable. I mean, it's like a... It's like flame, and then, you know, the beginning of that passage, that a tiny spark can set a forest on fire. Um, it's restless and evil. Um, so the best course of action, I think, is to remain quiet, and then when you do choose to speak, to be careful with what you say, especially when it comes to people. Hmm. When I was in junior high, I read a book called How to Be a Perfect Person. So it's this story of <laughs> this kid goes to the library, finds this book, he's all excited, How to Be a Perfect Person, and there's like all these steps that he has to go through. But by the end of it, all he's doing is sitting in a room by himself once in a while, sipping tea. <laughs> so the, the idea was if you want to be perfect, do nothing, talk to no one, interact with no one. Um, you, you are going to struggle with your tongue in your life. I don't care who you are. Everybody's going to sure. struggle with their speech. And uh, I, I think, again, it's something that you, you need people who can be uh, watching over you and who are going to, tell you that last 10% and be honest with you when you cross the line. Um, and it's something that I think you have to continually seek God in and say, God, am I honoring you in all areas of my life, including my speech? I agree. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we will finish the chapter where you're going to start in verse 13. If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover it up. Don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Good old godly wisdom. I love it. Um, I think that you draw your wisdom from Scripture, mostly, you know. At, but where else Where else do you think you could go for godly wisdom? Yeah, I, I think my, my dad is a pretty good source of wisdom. I mean, there's been times where I've just used him as a sounding board. You know, Dad, what do you think about this? You know, maybe... Uh, a new job opportunity or, um, you know, how to handle a difficult relational issue. Sure. Uh, my mom is very wise as well, so I'd, I'd say godly counsel. Yeah. Um, I think that that's, that's the two ways God has given us to gain wisdom. I mean, I think experience is one, but that's not literal. I mean, sure. it's not like an, uh, an explicit um, example of that. But I think uh, for me, too, to go to somebody who I trust who has shown that they he has walked a godly path – um, that I would trust, who, who probably has been through what I need wisdom to go through, that I would go to them for sure. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that God does speak to us through circumstance, obviously. I mean, God's Word should be primary in our life. Um, he can speak through circumstance, but yeah, having those people, um, if, if you don't have them already readily identified, you know, who are the two or three people that you would call that you know are going to be a great source of godly wisdom? Right. Uh, because there's no shortage of opinions out there of what you should do, but the source is what is most important. I agree. So find somebody whose life you respect and you trust and seek them out when you need some advice. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, Andy, what is a memorable piece of good advice you've recently received? Wow. Um, a memorable piece of good advice. 
that I recently received. All right, I got one. So I subscribe to Dan Ryland. He's a pastor at 12 yeah. Stone Church. Um, he's got a pretty cool blog that's, I, I would say it's geared toward pastors, but even non-pastors could benefit from it. Uh, but he recently uh, had a 35-year wedding anniversary, and he had one about uh, wives who are in the ministry, which I, th- I think everybody around the table, except for young Daniel, uh, is married with a wife who's in ministry. And one of the pieces of advice that he had in there was take time to dance. So he said that in the in the midst of the crazy seasons of ministry, um, never be too busy to just stop what you're doing and dance with your wife. Mm. And, uh, you know, that, that's pretty cool, you know, yeah. that... Uh, even though you have very important things to do and there's never a shortage, uh, at least in my house, with three kids running around um, to just stop and to dance and enjoy each other's company no matter what. Yeah, that kind of helped me to think of um, where, you know, my good piece of advice, I think from this might be a little weird, but you've given me several good pieces of advice when you were my intern director. Oh, oh. Um, one what of can which, I say? You know, I'm just Uncle Lukey helping Uncle out the kids Lukey. of America. You constantly have encouraged me since I've been married to make sure I'm dating my wife, going out on dates with her one-on-one, that kind of stuff. And we've we've done a a fairly good job at pretty much, like, I think it's every other week we go out on a one-on-one date nice. in, in some fashion. Gee, that's better than I do. So it's... We're like once a month. It's I mean, it's it's not easy, but um, it's, it's, never it's easy. so much fun, though. And it's, it's, made our, it's made our marriage much better than it could be, than it would have been had we not done that. So, yeah, definitely a marriage, marriage wisdom Don't, there. Don't leave them, Andy. Don't leave them hungry for love. Lead me. Lead me, Andy. What's that's, happening? That's what right your now? wife is calling out to you. <laughs> I don't know any more words of that song, but it's a good one. <laughs> anyway. Man, ham, ham. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, that guy. Right. With strong hands. Oh, with strong hands. <laughs> yes, yeah, strong hands and strong Take hearts. Strong, strong hand. minds. I don't know the rest of the song. Strong okay. minds. Uh, is, uh, Eric or Daniel, do you guys have any recent pieces of advice that you've heard that you would like to share with us? Um, I think for me, um, having just graduated college and kind of wanting to like launch a career and start all that, it's just kind of been be patient. I have like a, a few dudes who I look up to as my mentors and um, trying to make certain decisions, just kind of like take your time. Don't just think you have to make a decision right away. Just take your time. Let us speak into you, but you know, go to God, that sort of stuff. So. I'd say just being patient instead of just trying to make decisions right away and running with them. Cool. That's awesome, man. Love it. Eric, do you have any good advice you've gotten recently? Um, Never pet a burning dog. (laughs) What? When did you come across a burning dog? What if you have a fireproof glove on? It could be a hell dog. No, okay, you may be allowed to do it. Like, it may be okay to do it then, but it wouldn't be wise. Hmm. You could put the fire out. So I don't think a fireproof glove puts out fire. Like a like a fire. If what you if like a? That reminds me of my favorite deep thoughts by Jay Kennedy. <laughs> if you drop your keys into a vat of molten lava, they're gone, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let them go. <laughs> they're gone, man. All that's right. Awesome. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. I, I would say, you know, kind of what we want to leave you with thinking about is. Um, Think about your speech. Think about do your words reflect the glory of God in your life in all areas? And um, who are those great sources of godly wisdom that you need to seek out uh, for when times get a little tough or when you have an important decision to make? Yeah. Um, Control your tongue. Don't talk. That'd be my piece of last piece of advice. Can you take your own advice from now to the end of the show? He's nodding. I don't think you can do it. We'll see. All right. Well, if you guys want to get a hold of us, uh, you can email us, podcast at cedarcreek.tv. You can also leave us a Facebook comment. I would love to hear if there's something from Chapter 3 that has stood out to you, if if maybe one verse in particular uh, has really stood out to you. I would love if you would uh, share that with us. And also, if you would like to rate the podcast on iTunes or share the link on social media, that will help other people find the show. We always appreciate it when we get feedback from you guys and when we hear from you. So next up is James chapter 4. Andy's still not talking? Nope. Okay, I'm just going to take us on into the end here. And uh, if you haven't noticed by now, Andy loves to get the last word in, so I am reveling the fact that I'm going to get the last word. We'll see you next time, James chapter 4. Until next time. We'll see you later, guys.